What on earth do you think you were playing at? Ah, 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 don't start getting all protective. It's too late for that. Get out! I'll kick her out if you don't mind. Get out! What? What, of my own pub? Since when? Since you married me, baby. Any chance, Steve? Uh, in a minute. I'll deal with you later. Oh, what did I do? I'm playing on the fruit machine, minding my own business. Oh, that'll be the day. All right, is he yours? For now. Look, can we do this in the back? He was all over me this morning. Who was? You was. In Roy's. You should get yourself a new leash. He should get a new dog. Uh, do you mind? I had to beat him away with a stick. No, that is a barefaced lie. She's a fantasist. Right, in the back. In the back. Uh, no, can you stop and serve? Oh, could you, Steve? That would be fantastic. Shall we discuss this? Nope. Everyone accepts Hayley for who she is. She? <laughs> It's quiet in here. Have you scared everybody off? I've got some of that microwavable porridge you like, Sylvia. What was that about? Everyone was watching you. A bar full of people. You using that bloke like a flipping pole. I don't understand what they're doing here, either of them. What well, pubs don't run themselves? Do you remember when you lied for me in court? Do you remember that ages ago, wasn't it? You were Michelle then, and yet you lied for me. Wow. Talk about loyalty. You're drunk, Becky. And now we're married, that loyalty's just gone. Blowing the whistle on your own family. Bringing strangers into our house. Well, somebody's got to keep the place afloat, fund your new and hectic social life. Why well, shouldn't I be out enjoying myself? At least some blokes appreciate me. Or would they lie for you in court? Would they have social services on speed dial? Would they take my son away from me? Look, I took a risk, it backfired. I am devastated, Becky. You're mildly put out. Hey, um, I just grabbed my nail vanish. Who the hell are you? Eva, this is Becky, my wife. <laughs> You're Becky. Eva's Stella's daughter. Well, this just gets better and better, doesn't it? So, uh, what, you two, are you at it already, are you? Excuse me? Because it won't take him long if you're not. I can do better than it. No offence. Well, some taken. I don't see why you shouldn't fill your boots, love. What I did last week. I beg your pardon? What else do you think I was doing in that hotel room? Get out, Becky. No, I ain't going anywhere. Get out! And she hasn't said anything since. The first time in her life, my mother's rendered practically mute. <laughs> she must be very shocked and confused. Sympathise at your peril. I'll try and talk to her. I, I think she's best left alone for a while. More fools, Roy. We should have accounted for the Tracy Barlow's of this world. You know, for all her ignorance and candour, my mother is far from idiotic. Once she's had time to come to terms with this, life will go on. I've talked more difficult people through it than Sylvia. Have you? Yes, I have. And I refuse to sweep the subject under the carpet because that's where she'd prefer it. No, we'll sit her down and we'll respect whatever prejudice she throws at us. And we must brace ourselves. Our flight's at 2100 hours. Devindra promised to get us to the airport by 1800 hours. We like to check in and get settled. Grishma likes to buy her magazines. Vogue. El Hopper's Bazaar. Don't have to say it with such disdain. The cabin's still open. You've had all day to buy your magazines. She's a creature of habit and routine. At least I don't read Zoo. It was on the seat next to me. It was not my selection. Why isn't the Vindra answering his mobile? He's picking up the kids from street and he's probably still driving. It was not my selection. When we check in, I am going to request a seat as far away from you as possible. Good, because I don't want you or your magazines anywhere near me. See you in Mumbai. Mm. All right, ladies, are we ready? At last. No, I'll get the bags, oh, Auntie. Really? No, I'll get them. What? So many Hello. Oh. Oh, where do you think you are, the Regal? Sorry, Eileen. I'll leave it up, I promise. Where the hell have you been? Cineworld. I thought he was ill. I did Maria tell you? He was looking a bit peaky, so I took the afternoon off. We didn't want to worry you. Peaky? Off colour. Not himself. I was all on to go to A&E. Tell him, Eileen. He was all on to go to A&E. 
I nearly phoned the police. I've been ringing you like mad. Let me have a look. Oh, I've not turned it back on since the pictures. Whose job was it to remind me? Why's Daddy so cross? Oh, don't you worry about that. Daddy is about to give you uh, a big cuddle, aren't you, Daddy? You might even stretch to a hello. Mrs. Connor. Oh, not you again. Why don't we have a quick chat? About this. Well, I do, actually. And I'll tell you for why. Because, A, you'll try and make me say something to incriminate that poor girl. And, B, I was trying to have a nice, quiet drink here with my colleague. Who's nipped at the toilet before you ask. When would be more convenient? Never. Why would I make you incriminate her? Oh, here we go. You know, and I don't like the way you're harassing my staff, neither. This is murder, Mrs. Connor. You're telling me. Hey, everything all right? Who's your friend? Detective Sergeant Redfern, Weatherfield Police. Oh, I see. Former Chief Petty Officer Barlow, Weatherfield Bookies. I should warn you, sir, you're impeding police inquiries. Oh, I'm sorry, my apologies. Peter, come out of it. Just go steady on, me. Why don't you take your lady friend's advice? Wife, actually. Oh, look, why can't you come back tomorrow, Redfern? Well, it doesn't take a detective with your pal's introduction to work out. I've had a few. Can't it wait? Looks like it'll have to. Mm. What did I miss? Eva thinks she might have been winding you up. I don't think so. Well, for what it's worth, I don't think Carl knew too much about today's shenanigans. Not that I'd let him off that easily. What is doing? She's so pretty, Steve. When you think what she could be. Her own worst enemy. I was just saying how pretty his wife is. Is she? I barely noticed her. I thought not. I'm sure she is, obviously. Oh, please, look, it's humiliating enough. What do you want? Just thought I'd come in and test the temperature. It's still cool. Listen, um, Steve, I hope this won't stop, you know, me starting work with you today. Well, I don't see why it should. You're eating off me table, fending off me wife. May as well drive the cabs and all. <laughs> yeah, I respect that. Retaining a sense of humour in a stressful situation, yeah, sound. Your clean shirt's on the back of the door. Oh, what would I do without you? I dread to think. And then he orders me through to the back like I'm a dog. Which is what she called me, by the way. Where's Sylve? She's upstairs. Good. Well, the whole thing sounds regrettable. Strangers. In my house, Ailes, calling me names, and he texts their side. Well, I can understand why you were upset. Still, you should have seen his face when I told him what went off in that hotel room last week. That were a Kodak moment. Why, what went on? Nothing like I said, that's for sure. You mean you made things up? Well, it hurt for him to think the worst. He split my family apart, didn't it? Why not rub his nose in it? It seems rather spiteful. It's nothing compared to what he did. You have to look forward now, Becky. There's no use punishing him forever. Hey, this right. You have to consider what happens next. World is my oyster. Listen, there's some warm towels in here in cupboard. Get yourself a shower and a bite to eat and then we'll see what's what. And are you two all right? Fine. <clears throat> what's going on? I was being considerate, which is why I took the afternoon off work and didn't bother you with it. You know, he was probably ill in the first place because of that vile burger you bought him yesterday. Try making him proper food. It was 100%... It was junk! Well, I would have taken the day off work. I would have taken him to the pictures. He's my son, not yours. What are you, five years old? You know, maybe two dads is one too many in all this. Maybe I should be doing this on my own. Well, let me know when you've decided. Right, Frankie, I'm away from my bed. OK, I'll find you a cab. Oh, I've got men looking out for me everywhere I go tonight. I'll take mm. the lucky one. Night, night. See ya. Night. I'll give you now clearing up tonight. You don't have to do that. I want to. But it's not right. I'd rather be with you right now. An hour ago, you're all guns blazing. Well, Becky's up there now. I could do without any of this, Roy. I shouldn't have to explain myself. 
I don't. Something else told me courage. Hello, Sylvia. Just come down for my cardigan. Sit down, please. My program is about to start. Sit down, Sylvia. Do you like anything to eat? We, we have some buns left over. I do not want buns, thank you. If you'd like to ask me any questions. No, thank you. That's fine. We should have told you from the start. We should have been honest with you. I really regret you having to find out the way you have. But can I say something? You do seem to be coping with it very well. Are you a man? No, Sylvia. I'm a woman. Oh, Roy, you must be so ashamed. Roy found it very difficult to absorb at first. When we first met, I was what you could say halfway through the procedure. Oh, dear God. I'm the proudest man alive. We older folk, we can be such fools. Oh, nobody's saying that. Well, the things you see on television, the things you read about while you're sat under the dryer, you don't think they're actually true. You don't think they really happen. Let alone in your own family. You're not my family. You're just... You're just a friend of Roy's. Haley is my wife. Not my friend, my wife. What would they say? What would who say? Well, all of them. Your father, your cousins, the neighbours. <laughs> well, they wouldn't be surprised. Oh, they wouldn't be surprised. Everyone knew you were strange, Roy, but... Homosexual? It never crossed my mind. Roy isn't homosexual. Then what is he? Your tone is unforgivably judgmental. Then don't forgive me. In fact, I'll make it easier for all of us and I'll move out. Oh, pity you. Yes, Roy, pity me. Pity me for a change. People have spent their entire lives pitying you for what I don't know. You! Because I have to contend with you. And now you've landed me with... With this! You ask me if I feel ashamed. I don't feel ashamed. You're the expert, the subject of shame. I have never been ashamed of you. Yes, you have. No! You were a disappointment to me. But that doesn't mean I didn't love you. Just didn't know what to do with you. I mean, things were different then. There was no help, there was no advice. And, and when I came here and I saw the life that you built for yourself, your business, your wife, I was so proud of you. You thought the world of Haley this morning? <laughs> Nothing's changed. Oh, I beg to differ. We all know why you're here. And we all know why I'm leaving. You've nowhere else to go. You've not a penny to your name. Who told you that? But I will tell you this. I will happily see you walk through that door if you continue to treat my wife in this manner. Haley and I have welcomed you into our home and will only tolerate so much. So if you wish to run away from this, if you wish to run away from us, then run away. But run away now. Thank you. I saw the way you were with her. Who's Stella? Small talk, love. Carla, and that copper. You needn't have waded in like that. Okay, come on then. What are you getting at? I don't know, you tell me. Well, I was defending a mate. <laughs> and then there was your little story about the football nearly in her head. And it dealt with a year, that. Oh dear. I'm not daft, Peter. I'm not accusing you of anything, but I know she still gives you a kick. Nothing happened oh. between me and Carly, you I'm know I'm going that. home. Lee, come, Lee, come, sit down. I'd prefer it if you had not more to do with her. And that's not an order, that's me admitting that I feel insecure about it. So what am I supposed to do, love? Just cross the road every time I see her coming? I know I'm the guilty one. It's just, I don't like the thought of you two having cosy little chats together. You fight in a corner. I've seen the way she smiles at you. I'm scared it'll go to your head. Go on, tell me I'm being unreasonable. No, you're not. You're not being unreasonable. 
You've got me banged to rights, fine. Oh, now you're going to tell me the truth, aren't you? And I'm not going to like it. Be careful what you wish for, Leanne. Look, my self-esteem, it was on the floor. And then Carla turned to me and I went from a drunkard to a hero. And you're right. Yes, it does appeal to my fragile ego. And if I said it didn't, then I'd be lying to you. Right. So you're saying if I'm asking you to keep your distance, you're saying no? No, I'm not. I'm saying that I will keep my distance, you know, short of being downright rude to her. Oh, well, now I feel like you're admitting she is a threat. No, I'm not, love. I'm saying the absolute opposite. I'll forfeit any friendship for your sake, OK? If that doesn't get me an early night, then I don't know what will. <laughs> of all the cheek. <laughs> Children, if you want something to fall out of, look no further. Mm. It's as if just because he's actually got one, I can't possibly know more about it than he does. Well, I'm sorry, but I do. He'll come round. He's just not used to it. You have to remember that. Mm. You won't mention any of this to him, will you? I am the Bermuda Triangle of gossip. I mean, enough trouble as it is. It'll work itself out. Yeah, I'll drink to that. <laughs> Robert, People give up too easily on marriage. I ain't given up on it. You're still here. Yeah. Why are you still here? Because from what I can see, you're just a miserable old hag. I am here because I am his mother. You start acting like it then instead of bitching and moaning and criticising everything that they do and everything that they are. You think I'm going to take advice from you? Have you heard what people say about you? <laughs> Listen. If you can't handle what Ailey is, don't you start taking it out on me, girl. When I was your age, women had some self-respect. But you? Oh, drinking, swearing, throwing yourself at men. Oh, it's a nightmare. My son, cavorting with eunuchs and taking in parasites like you. I knew he was simple, but I never saw this coming. Admit you're wrong. You don't belong here. Ella's a brilliant person, and you know it. I don't know what she is. I don't understand any of it. She's Ailey Crapper. She's simple as that. And I still have to pay for that, even at this stage. Um, OK, well, listen, uh, thanks again. If I change my mind, I'll let you know. Right. You asked for a uh, chilli sauce on mine? Who is that? Is it any of your business? Oh, well, I don't know. Do I till you tell me? Look, you only live once, Steve. That's my only advice. Don't settle for anything. Keep going. Well, I like your missus as much as the next man, but you're my priority. And if you want to make a go of it, tell her. If you don't, tell her. What well, if I don't know? Ah, but you do, though, don't you? Looking for someone? No. Uh, I've just come in about my wages. Steve around. He's gone to yoga lattes. Hmm. All right. I've been worse. I'm sorry. I said I've been worse. No. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just all new to me, is this? I know it is. You make it look so easy. It's new for me as well. Do you really think it was because of that dodgy burger? No. And even if it was, he's alive, isn't he? Kids get bad tummies, Sean. They fall over and hurt their knees. They get Bieber fever. I guess the trick is not to panic. Yeah, but that's the thing, you see. I am a panicker. Yeah. Is Eileen babysitting? Why? Let's go out. Have you seen the state of the way I'm dressed? Well, you'll have to change first, granted. You've twisted my arm. What about your wages? On a Monday. You've got a lot to learn, love. See ya. <laughs> you two still down here inventing stuff to do? We're just doing a little uh, stock take. You're not going out again? I'm off to find Steve. You look lovely. Well, I'm trying. Well, it all sounds very mature. I never said I was forgiving him. No, but, I don't know, if if I make an effort, he might and all, and then... It can be very inspiring sometimes. Oh, get lost. Right, go on now, you two. It's nine o'clock and we've not had tea yet. It's your idle bird. 
She knows her place. Good luck, Becky. Ta. I say, and if I don't come home, it's because I went home. Oh, you've remembered me name. Well, that's a good start. I was just coming to see you. Of course you were. No, well, what happened? Me or Carl? Or any of the other blokes you were knocking off last week? Incidentally, how many were there? None. Yeah, right. I wanted you to suffer. Oh, well, congratulations, Becky. Mission accomplished. Yeah, well, if you had any idea how angry I was with you. And I, I still am with you. But I wouldn't sleep with anyone, Steve. Of course I wouldn't. I don't want our marriage to end. <laughs> we did well to get this far. Maybe. I'm a nightmare. I know I am. I'm so sorry, but I haven't had the best of things, Look, have I'm I? I'm filing for divorce. No, I haven't no. got any fight left in me, you, Becky. You don't need any because I'm going to calm down now, aren't I? I promise you I will. Well, my solicitor is writing you a letter. I can't remember what the form is, but I'm sure she'll explain. I want to come home. Look, we'll always be friends, Becky. Take me home. I'll always care about I you. I just... I just want to come home. It was never meant to be. Nothing ever is, is it? And he said, no, no this is really, really serious. He said, there's actually four babies in here. At which point, Julie burst out crying. My legs gave way. I literally was on the floor on my knees. You'll see why they're quite the handful and four of a kind next tonight.